I don't get it, Ian. Why would someone carry a 45? Because they don't make a 46. But what if they did make a 46? Thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, both of me apparently, and uh, I'm here today at Guns.com taking a look at some of the weird and interesting cool stuff that shows up in their warehouse. Specifically today we have this stainless steel Detonix Scoremaster. It is a 1911, but what makes it interesting is it's a 1911 chambered for 451 Detonix Magnum, not 45 ACP. And it represents sort of the beginning of what I think is a really interesting uh, historical trend of attempting to scale up the 45 ACP to, in essence, make a 46. And the story kind of ends with an actual 46, the 460 Roland cartridge. So today we're going to talk about specifically the 451 Detonix Magnum, where it came from, what it does, and how it worked. Today's video is generously sponsored by Guns.com. They started as a blog and then, a few years ago, uh, developed themselves into a significant firearms marketplace, both with their own extensive warehouse of cool stuff, and also a system for listing guns from brick and mortar FFLs around the country, which is really cool and gives you, the uh, consumer on their website, access to a whole lot of neat stuff. Including also print material, because while they, while they started as a blog, they didn't give that up when they de decided to develop into a full-on marketplace. So check out their news section and you can find cool articles on what's going on, some on legal issues, on technical issues, firearms reviews, all sorts of other cool stuff, including as well their podcast, Two Guys One Gun with Alexander and Chris, a podcast I was I enjoyed being on myself not that long ago. So check out what they have for sale, but also just check out the informational content that they still publish on a daily basis over at Guns.com. So Detonix starts out as a company in the late 1970s, uh, making custom elite high-end 1911s. And their first product, the one that they got best known for initially, was this little guy. Essentially the first factory production compact 1911. Before this, Yes, people had short little baby 1911s, but they're all guns that were cut down from factory Colts. And Detonix figured, we can make some changes, we can make this into the more concealable, the sophisticated, you know, the, the, the man who knows what he's carrying would carry a 3-inch micro Detonix 45. And it proved to be pretty popular. It was a very expensive gun at the time, uh, but it offered something that just wasn't out there on a factory-made basis, and that kicked off Detonix as a company. Now, in 1979, the 45 Winchester Magnum cartridge is introduced to the American gun-buying public. And this is a long cartridge. It's, think of it like 44 Magnum in length, where 45 ACP is a fairly short, stubby cartridge. 45 Winchester Magnum uh, you know, was one of the early Magnum automatic pistols that offered just massive amounts of power. But what it also did was create the opportunity to make basically high octane 45 ACP. Now, if we go back to the origins of the 1911 and the 45 ACP, it's an early pistol. This is a cartridge that's being developed in like 1904, 1905. It's first released in the Colt 1905 pocket hammer pistol. This is early in the development of semi-auto pistols. The first semi-auto pistol ever that was functional, you know, came out of the factory in series and worked, was 1891, the Salvatore Dormus. So we're talking basically 15, 13 years, 13, 14 years from the first ever self-loading pistol. Um, the metallurgy is early, it's uh, simplistic by today's standards, it's weak by today's standards. Um, it's not till 1896, five years later, that there's really a commercially viable self-loading pistol, that's the C96 Mauser. So, you know, this Colt 1905 is less than 10 years from the first viable commercial gun of its type. And the 45 ACP cartridge is designed with this, this relatively early designs in mind, pistol designs in mind. It is a fairly high volume cartridge because it's big, 45 caliber in diameter, but it's made for early production star, or early chemistry gunpowder that isn't particularly high pressure by today's standards. We've people don't really think about the chemical formulations of the gunpowder that we use today, but it's a lot more potent than powders from 120 years ago. 
So 45 ACP is limited to a relatively low pressure, it's like a 21,000 psi cartridge, and that means uh, it's a relatively large volume of powder, relatively low pressure burn rate, and the brass, as a result, is made relatively thin. It doesn't have to be really thick, strong brass, because it's not containing all that much pressure. And in the 1911, there's an area underneath, well, above the feed ramp, at the bottom of the cartridge, that's not completely supported by the chamber when the cartridge is in battery and when it fires. And this is in no way a problem. Like, you may have heard of the unsupported chamber kabooms in 40 caliber Glocks. It's the same essentially the same thing. There has to be a little bit of unsupported space, because you need a space for the cartridge to actually like slide into the chamber. But in 45 ACP it doesn't matter. The cartridge is low pressure, everything's perfectly strong enough. But what it does is limit your ability to just wildly overpressure the cartridge. So what we see is a lot of high-end development of revolver cartridges, think the Magnums, the, the 38 Special, then the 357 Magnum, the 44 Magnum, the 357 Maximum, all of these sorts of cartridges, which are much easier to hot rod because the case is completely fully supported. And so you don't really have to worry about the brass blowing out uh, at an unsupported area. Um, the thin brass of the 45 ACP prevents there from being a hot rodded 45, until 1979, when the 45 Win Mag comes out. And that is a much higher pressure cartridge that has the same sort of geometric issues, and so the brass is a lot thicker, especially at the very back, just in front of the case head, that little unsupported area, much thicker brass in 45 Win Mag so that they can load it hotter. Now Detonix sees that, and in, within just a couple of years, in the early 1980s, they see the opportunity here to make a hotter version of 45 for their pistols, and this would be the 451 Detonix Magnum. The way they do it is they take 45 Win Mag brass and they cut it down to... Well, they don't cut it all the way down to be the same length as 45 ACP, because they don't want this new cartridge to be able to be accidentally chambered in a standard 1911, or like a Colt 1905 pocket hammer, where it would do some serious damage to the gun because it's so much higher pressure, you might have the brass blow... or well, you wouldn't have the brass blow out, but you'd be battering the slide backwards. You, you want to prevent people from doing that. And so just like the 38 and 357 revolver cartridges are sort of one direction interchangeable, they did the same thing with 451 Detonics. It's about a millimeter longer, so the case will not fully fit into a regular 45 ACP chamber. However, in an emergency, you can run 45 ACP in your 451 Detonics Magnum. Uh, they then load it nice and hot, and oh boy, this is a hot cartridge, especially for the very early 1980s when there is no 45 ACP plus P. That's not a thing yet. Uh, this cartridge will run a 200 grain bullet at about 1200 feet per second, it'll run a 185 grain bullet at 1300 feet per second. To put that in context, regular 45 ACP velocity with a 185 grain bullet is about 1000 feet per second. So they're bumping the velocity up like legitimately 30%. It is a hot cartridge. And they introduce it in primarily this pistol, the Scoremaster, which is Detonic's essentially copy of the government model with a 5 inch barrel. Let's take a closer look at that. Detonix had a number of different pistol configurations that they made standard. Uh, this one is their 5 inch, or slightly more than 5 inch barrel gun, which they called the Scoremaster. Note the adjustable uh, rear sight there. This is uh, considered to be... I mean, you could use this as a carry gun, I suppose, but it was kind of more intended for competition and target use. They also made... their other really popular one was the Combat Master, which was a 4 inch uh, compact model. The vast majority of 451 Magnum guns that were made were 5 inch Scoremasters. So you can see there marked on the slide, and you'll see that on the barrel as well, which we'll get to in a moment, uh, 451 Detonix Magnum. They did often sell these as combination packages, where you'd get a 451 barrel and a 45 ACP barrel. They did also sell the 451 as a conversion kit that you could drop the upper assembly onto any standard 1911 frame. So in total, they made about 1,200 uh, 451 Detonix Magnum pistols, out of a total production of about 26,000 guns. So this was not a really successful endeavor for them. Um, they made a decent number, but it never really caught on. It's worth pointing out, you could get 
Uh, 451 Magnum guns in other configurations if you asked for them, if you ordered them. And I've actually seen a picture of one of these little tiny guys uh, <laughs> bought as a kit with a 45 ACP barrel and a 451 Magnum barrel in this little 3 inch frame. And that, that would be, I think, a <laughs> somewhat daunting prospect to actually shoot. The magazines are standard 1911 magazines. The cartridge case, despite having a longer uh, longer brass than 45 ACP has the exact same overall length as 45 ACP, uh, so that it will fit unmodified at all. Uh, magazines, frames, you don't have to do any sort of conversion work there. The mainspring plunger here is a bit different. The barrel bushing, well there isn't a barrel bushing, so let's go ahead and take this apart look at the internals. To do that I'm going to pull this back to the disassembly position, We'll pull out the slide stop pin, let that forward gently. By the way, note the nice solid beaver tail to prevent the slightly bobbed hammer from ever hitting your hand. That's good protection there. Uh, the frame assembly here is standard 1911. It is all stainless steel, I should have pointed that out. That was one of Detonic's big things, is they made stainless steel pistols. That was a popular uh, option in the 70s and 80s in particular. And we got a bit of different stuff going on here. Really the only modification that had to be made to handle uh, 451 Detonics was to increase the recoil spring uh, resistance to help keep this, you know, to slow the slide down once it unlocked and started uh, cycling. And so what Detonics did was actually give this a dual recoil spring. So we've got a big one on the outside like a standard 1911, and we've got a smaller diameter additional spring on the inside. And there is actually a little bit of a buffer pad in the center of the uh, spring spring bushing back here to absorb a little bit of that last impact. So that will take force that otherwise would eventually start to peen uh, parts in the gun, and that little buffer will absorb it. Once that's out, the spring guide plug here is a little bit different than a standard 1911. That's a guide that slides into the dust cover lug down there. And then standard typical swinging link construction, they didn't change that at all. But the, bush, the barrel is bushingless, so instead of being continuous diameter with a barrel bushing milled into the end of the slide, as is typical, this uh, is a, essentially a bull barrel at the end, and it fits exactly into the end of the slide. I mentioned that you'd see the chamber chambering mark on the barrel. There it is, uh, 3262 is the serial number on this pistol, and 451 mag. So on guns that were sold as packages you would get two barrels, both with the same serial number, and uh, you know one in 45 ACP, one in 451 magnum. So there you go, there is the uh, 451 Detonix Magnum Scoremaster disassembled. Not quite identical to a standard 1911, but fairly close. The 451 Detonics never becomes a popular cartridge, it's never a commercial success, and this is largely because they're never able to get ammunition factory manufactured by anyone. They get part way there, they're able to actually get Winchester to manufacture a run of cartridge cases, uh, 45 or 451 Detonics Magnum cases. They're marked 451 DET Magnum on the head stamp. Winchester makes 500,000 cases in the first run, but that's the only run. And so all the way through the history of the Detonics company, the 451 is a hand-loading proposition. Uh, when you buy the pistol you get a copy of their hand-loading manual with it. There are a couple companies that have come up since, and there were a couple sort of at the time that did custom loads, but you could never go to the store and buy the ammo. You could never even order factory ammo from a full-fledged ammunition producer. And that would really, I think, cripple the potential of this cartridge to become a little more mainstream. To the point that in 1988 a gun writer for Gunworld named Dean Grinnell basically took the idea and tried to make it a little more readily accessible. Uh, and he created the 45 Super cartridge, which is essentially 451, he took in fact 451 Detonix Magnum Brass and cut it back to exactly 45 ACP length, but continued to load it nice and hot. The idea being but if you accidentally put this in a regular 1911 with a low powered recoil spring, you know, a regular 45 ACP recoil spring, it's not going to explode. Um, it'll, it's not healthy for your pistol in large numbers, but 
it's not going to blow up. Like there's not really a liability thing. And by doing this, it means you can run this ammunition in any standard 45 ACP barrel. All you have to do is like upgrade the recoil springs in the gun to be able to better handle the, the recoil. And this will make the cartridge much more accessible to people, because they don't need the special barrel. And he's right, 45 Super becomes more popular than 451 Detonics Magnum ever was. Um, now the one other cartridge in this space that we should mention is the 460 Roland, which actually goes back to the Detonics idea. And this, it's the same basic concept, it's still essentially using uh, 45 Winchester Magnum, big, thick, strong brass as its parent case. And it gets cut down, but like the Detonics, the 460 Roland is cut longer than 45 ACP, because it's loaded really hot. Uh, it's loaded to something close to like 40,000 psi. So we're talking almost double the chamber pressure of 45 ACP. It will cause real problems in a regular 45 pistol if you are foolish enough to load it and use it. Uh, so it's cut long to prevent that sort of interchanging from happening. It's the hottest of these cartridges, and it gets the actual 46 name, the 460 Roland. And it is still available today. It has had better staying power than any of its uh, predecessors in the like 45 short magnum space. And uh, it's also the hottest of all of them, which has probably helped contribute to why it did manage to survive. It's still a very niche cartridge, but it is out there, and ammunition can be obtained from not major gun companies, like you're not going to go to Fiocchi and get 460 Roland, but smaller boutique gun uh, ammunition companies do make 460 Roland. So that is the backstory on the 451 Detonics Magnum, which I thought was a pretty darn interesting one. It's fun to take a look at the, like, the tactical developments, the, the niche shooting community interests from decades past. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video as well. Thanks for watching.